He had blue eyes. Blue, blue eyes. I don't know where he was born, or where he grew up, or how he grew up. I don't know if he was clever or not clever, witty or dull, patient or impatient, impetuous or deliberate, popular or not. I know nothing of his family, or his friendships, or his work, or his ambitions, or of anything he achieved, if he achieved anything. But I do know that he had blue eyes, that his eyes were so wide and so blue. I don't know if he had one girlfriend, or many, or none. I don't know if ever he had a special girl, as I had a special girl. A girl who had made his heart somersault whenever he saw her. A girl who had a smile like the sun coming out. I don't know if he had such a girl, if he, like me, immortal on his motorcycle, had leaned around winding lanes under blue summer skies and white clouds that floated like disembodied thoughts between meadowsweet and wild roses, with the girl pressed in behind him, her arms around his safe, broad chest, her head back laughing, her hair streaming and flailing in the rummaging wind. I know nothing of this, if ever there had been anything of this, but I do know that he had blue eyes, that, he's, well, he, that he was about my age, and that his eyes seemed so blue. I don't know if that girl, one of his girls, if he had a girl, had been the one, a girl who seemed to complete him somehow, had seemed the missing half of him, had made him whole. I don't know if they married and one night in bed, she, like my wife, had snuggled up to him and put his hand on her soft warm belly and whispered for the first time, feel, do you feel it? Do you feel it move? And he had whispered, yes, yes, I do feel it. I do feel it move. And then he had told her that he loved her and she had told him that she loved him and they had edged their faces close together on the pillow and their lips had sought one another's out and they had kissed before, spooned together. Her back curved into him, his arm around her waist, his hand over her belly. They had fallen into a sleep as soft and deep as a time lagoon. I know nothing of this, if ever there was anything of this, but I do know that he was about my age and that his eyes looked so blue, seemed so wide and so blue. I don't know if that morning before coming to that place, he had reached inside his breast pocket and looked at the photograph, as I, that morning, had reached inside my breast pocket and looked at the photograph. Or if he had read the special letter again, as I had read the special letter again. Or if, his back turned to the others, a tear had dough rolled down his unshaven cheek, as a tear had rolled down my unshaven cheek. I don't know how long he'd been there, I don't know, know what told me he was there. It wasn't a bird because there were no birds. It wasn't a whisper because there were no voices. No twig snapped. There was in that place only the thrumming silence and the roar in my ears. And then I sensed him and he saw me and we both whirled in endless slow motion. And I felt the recoil and saw his head thrown back and his arms thrown wide and his helmet falling. Him. Falling, falling. I don't know if he was Hans or Fritz or Wolfgang or Siegfried. I know nothing about his childhood or his parents, his youth or his loves, or his wife if he had one. I know, soon saw, have so long remembered only this, that he was about my age and that his glazed eyes were open, sightless and empty under the blue, blue sky. Mm -hmm.